Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Joe Vore Podcast, JV Podcast Network, The Bachelor Roundup, Episode 6. Joe Vore, Daniel McGuire, you know him. He's been doing these, Season 12, Bachelorette, Seasons 3 and 4, Bachelor in Paradise. Before we jump into this, just a reminder, every single Tuesday, our Bachelor Roundup recaps drop on YouTube. Joe Vore, be sure to subscribe. We're also available, podcast audio style, Apple and Spotify, the Joe Vore Podcast. Be sure to follow rate, review, and subscribe. So Daniel, we get a little um, foreshadowing. We've been seeing this clip for the last few weeks. Heather Martin has arrived and Chris Harrison is down there. He's like, who? Who's here? Heather Martin, what are you doing here? This is such a surprise. This is obviously staged, right? I mean, this was pretty bad. I, yeah, I just wonder like how many people think that it's not staged or don't like it think of that when it happens. I'm curious. I mean, most of society isn't that bright, so I wouldn't be surprised that at least half of them think it's real. But uh, yeah, it's pretty bad acting. I mean, Chris Harris is not an actor, but you know, they, you think by now they would just be like, you know, kind of tell that is planned. You just tell us, you know, so, you know people are going to be more interested, you know? Yeah. And you know, we're, br- we're breaking this down critically, but honestly, Chris Harrison's approval rating with his audience is so high that even if he's a bad actor, everyone's going to be like, oh, Chris, you're so funny. We love you. I don't know if people like him or not. I, I'm not aware of that. I think everyone everyone that I know really likes him. I like him, but not a great actor. But anyways, um, we pick back up where we kind of left off with last episode. The two-on-one, I've talked about it. We've talked about it on this show. Two-on-ones never end well. We've said it before. We're going to say it again. Someone always goes home. Sometimes we see both of them go home immediately, but the person that usually survives the two-on-one sometimes doesn't make it past that night's rose ceremony, or they're usually gone within one to two weeks, maybe two weeks if they're super lucky. So we have MJ and we have Josenia. We see them. We kind of pick back up. They're going at each other one-on-one. Then Matt walks in, and this is where we officially pick up with some new content, some new footage from last week. We saw Matt walking in. That's when we got the to-be-continued screen. So Matt's here. He grabs Josenia first, one-on-one, and she comes right out and says, MJ's a liar. She's not a good person. This, that, this is what's going on. Calls her out. Matt's kind of shocked because this is not what Matt has seen from MJ He's not aware of all these things being said about MJ, but you can tell it's definitely making him think. He grabs MJ. She denies, she denies, she denies. She brings out the tears. She tries to do what she can. And then Matt says, we got no decision yet. Matt's like, I got to think about this. Matt leaves. They go back at it again. They're still going at it. Matt walks back in and for his decision. Now, I want to ask you, Daniel, you're watching this. At this point, who did you think was going to get the rose before you saw the decision? I had a feeling that MJ would. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's easy for us as a viewers because we see, we can see a little bit more what's going on. He's not hanging out with women, but um, I had a feeling that MJ would. She just seems a little bit... Uh, evil and uh yeah. fake she's saying she didn't do this and that didn't cause any problems she just, or she's just delusional you know not aware of what she's saying and doing you know? yeah mj's kind of like amc stock i really really liked her i'm really glad that i was in early she's my ohio girl i was rooting for her and it kind of turns out i wish i would have sold her a long time ago when she was a lot more hot than she is now before i kind of found out she's kind of a fraud so you still have a- AMC is what you're saying? She's kind of, she's on that AMC trajectory right now. Oh, I, so you obviously still have AMC. I still have AMC, but I got in like at two bucks. I bought it like beginning of January before it went mainstream. So I didn't have much. Yeah, so, so nothing, nothing crazy. I think if I cashed out, I'd have five bucks, but so MJ goes home. Josenia's journey continues. No cocktail party. And this is what was cracking me up. Ryan, but just, to, but just so just quickly, uh, so I'm not surprised. I mean, yeah. Matt obviously said sent MJ home. You could obviously he obviously knew, you know, that something was going on. Um, so he's not. I mean, I guess he's fairly aware of what's going on in the house, and he picked up the, that vibe that she wasn't the right person, at least for him, and to be there. Yeah, and I do have to give you credit because you said you're like Matt. 
Matt did a good job. You're like, he saw kind of right through her bullshit. He kind of saw right through it. He, he kind of picked up with kind of, he kind of gathered the vibe that we have seeing everything without being able to see anything. So I thought he handled it pretty well. Yeah. 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 So like we said, no cocktail party. Now, Ryan, a new girl, this was cracking me up. Ryan, who's been there for five minutes, she already got a one-on-one with Matt and she is like bawling her eyes out like at this leading up to this rose ceremony i was like what's does she not really so she comes in on this second wave she doesn't get to come so she, she she's sitting on a lot she has a lottery ticket here and she cashed it in she didn't she wasn't part of the first wave of the contestants she still gets to come in on this second wave she's there for five minutes she's a new girl everyone hates her she gets a one-on-one that's super lucky some of the girls that have been there the whole time still don't have one-on-one, still will never get a one-on-one. And yet she's bawling her eyes. I mean, like when you were watching this, like what, what's going through your head? Cause I was like, are we? Yeah. Still- I'm just thinking that some of these girls are just train wrecks. They're just uh, super emotional. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think they're faking it. I just, I feel like there's maybe getting too caught up in, in it. I don't know. Right. But I mean, it's never, I would never date most of these girls. <laughs> Smart move, smart move, and we see it behind the scenes, so we know that for for sure that wouldn't be the uh, wouldn't be the move there. So the the next day, um, we, Chris Harrison he delivers a group date card. Piper, her name's not on it. She gets the one on one, and now uh, uh, Serena C grabs Katie. A little sidebar, one-on-one, two girls, Serena C and Katie to talk about Katie's antics. Um, And it kind of- Yeah, her antics basically were that she brought up that there was a bunch of bullying going on in the house. Yeah. like And that it was getting over the top. That's basically all she said. Serena C, I'm not a big fan of her at all. No, no. I don't like her. And we'll get to it. I can't believe that she got a rose. But yeah, I was like, so she's whistleblowing for- just bad things that are going on in the house. And she's like, not really naming people by name. She's just trying to make Matt aware of it, which I think is a, like, I have no issue with it. Yeah. And then Serena say, saying that it's her fault for all the stuff coming about. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm just, she, Katie's just basically telling Matt that there was a whole bunch of one going on and it was over the top. And Serena's mad that this got brought to attention and that her, she's not getting as much time. I mean, it, just, it all really comes down to insecurity, you know? Yeah. Oh, for for sure. It comes down to insecurity. It comes down to her being frustrated. She's ending up in these group date cards. She's blending in because what is called what it is. She doesn't really stick out. Like she's not a shine in Matt's eye. She's just not. And so she's frustrated and she's trying to take this out on Katie. She goes, who like, how can I start a narrative here? How can I, you know, who has something that's just enough where I can run with it. And that's exactly what Serena C is doing. And like you, I don't like it. It's insecurity. I, I just don't like it at all. Um, so it turns into a screaming match. It ends. Serena C walks back in. She's like, oh, my gosh, to the other girls, this and that. Oh, my God. Wow, what's going on? All this screaming. And Katie comes and she goes, you know, you don't have to whisper. And then they kind of start going at it again, uh, which was great. So we have that little interaction in the house, a little behind the scenes. And now, Daniel, it's time to meet Heather Martin. Now, I know you don't watch the show. She was on Colton season. She was now, you know, we've had virgins on the show before. Apparently, her time on the show before she was kissed, she had never been kissed. So, you know, the little when they when they put their name tags on their heads, you know, it says, here's her, you know, here's her name, here's her age. And hers just said, never been kissed. Yeah, it's funny how like people still take that show serious, you know. It's like someone, I mean, like Heather's very good looking. I'm like, no one kissed her, nothing. Yeah, I I find that very, very surprising. Yeah, I wasn't feeling that. So it comes back to our little preview that we got. Chris Harrison out there. Oh my gosh, Heather, what are you doing here? What a a surprise. Like we said, Colton season, apparently, I think she said she was spending time with a friend, a mutual friend, you know, or she knew, or this person knew Matt over quarantine. She goes, oh my gosh, this guy's the best. You know, you guys would be great together, this and that. So Heather felt, I have to meet him. I have to meet him. I, I can't, 
you know, let him get engaged to someone else. I can't let him go through this entire show without meeting him. It just looks like you're going to say, well, what's up? I was going to say, do you, so do you, the question I have is, do you find that creepy or is that, is it over the top or is it one of these things where maybe she really thought this is a you know, potential love in my life and I want to get, a, I don't want him to get away or she just thought, you know, maybe I could get some airtime. I don't know. Like, I just wonder. Is I it- think it's a little bit of both because I've come to really, I, I really like Matt. I think Matt's done a good job. It seems from what we've seen, he's a really good guy. So I'll give the maybe benefit. Of- he's single there. Maybe you could go try to, you know, meet him or something. <laughs> I might, I might take you up on that. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, sh- maybe the, the big kicker here is in two weeks, I'm going to show up on the show. Be like, Hey, me, I'm the YouTube guy. I can't, I cannot meet. I, I have to meet this guy. Matt's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> who, who the fuck is this guy? Why does he look like, why is he dressed like Chris Harrison? What are you doing here? I'm like, I'm coming for your job, Chris. And I'm like, Matt, what's up? You want to grab a drink, buddy? Let's be buddies. Let's be friends. Let's be pals. Um, so, yeah. So, so, so I think it's a little bit of that. And also it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, she's bored over quarantine. She's single. You know, she she's in this Bachelor universe. She was a contestant on The Bachelor, and she's just trying to get back in the game. And honestly, I'm sure the producers were all about it because it's a fun storyline. They have the environment to do it. They're not traveling all over the place. They're like, yeah, if Matt says yet, yes, great. We'll make sure that she quarantines, and we're good to go. This is great for ratings. I agree. I think it all checks out. I think it really does. Um, you know, from all the stuff that we've kind of, you know, that I've learned from you. I'm, over not, I'm, not. I'm just, you know, you just wonder, like, some girl out of nowhere just comes out, like, is she a f- stage five a clinger? You know, is she a stalker? You know, I just, it's, I wonder. I definitely if think it would be weirder, like, if she was just showing up randomly. Like we said, she has this friend that knows Matt. I forget. I didn't go back and look at who she said or what it was. Um, you know, and obviously she, whoever the friend was, really talked up Matt. So that got Heather's interest. And she's a part, like we said, of the Bachelor universe already. So I think that makes it a little more normal in this crazy made up imaginary world that is the Bachelor and Bachelorette. Of course. So I think it all kind of checks out. But if I show up, that'd be weird. Or if a girl like me showed up that's totally on the outside, that's just a fan that- so has, a girl that looks like me, yeah, that'd be pretty ugly. Uh, that'd be bad. It'd be like that weird Snapchat filter that we see people doing. Um, all right, so let's let's get back. Okay, so so Chris Harrison says I can't make any promises, my, not my decision, but I'll run the message up the hill to Matt, and we'll see what happens. We'll get to that later. But first, we have Piper's one-on-one night walk. She flips this, you know, imaginary switch that they have in the woods, and it's a carnival. It's basically Greece at night without the song and dance. Um, and so so we we see that going on. They're at this carnival together. They're doing carnival games. Blah blah blah. Back at the house, another group date card. Whose name isn't on it? Katie's name. She's going to get the one-on-one. We're going to get to that. But first, we're back from commercial, and we find out. Before we get to p- back to Piper's one-on-one, we find out that Heather, sh- the box was checked yes. She's officially in quarantine at her hotel away from the resort, and she's just quarantining. She's doing her little vlog videos, whatever. Those are always, like, extremely cheesy and hard to watch. But – we know that Heather's in the ball game here. Obviously, no surprise there. She was going to be around. She wasn't going to be around just for that second. Um, so when you found this out, when you saw this, obviously, I know you're not surprised. But what did you think? So let's start with this. From a viewer perspective, from someone that's watching the show that wants to be entertained, how, what were your initial thoughts when you realized, okay, Heather's going to be a part of this? I mean, yeah, because so far this episode has been pretty boring besides a little bit of that Serena and Katie fight. But um, yeah, it's been pretty boring. And I mean, obviously it sucks for the girls that are currently there, but for entertainment's sake, yeah, why not? Yeah, I love it. Mix it up. We don't, haven't really seen things like this before. It feels like we've referenced before. It feels very paradise where new people are coming in, relationships have been formed and people are coming in and out uh, of paradise. So we get back to Piper's date dinner time. Once again, we see another one of these situations. She says to Matt that she's falling for him. He smiles. He seems to like it. She gets the rose. But again, we saw this with Kit and now we've seen it with Piper. He doesn't say it back. Rachel is the only girl that he said it back to. Yeah. I mean, it could be one of these things where 
you know, maybe we're just looking, you're looking into, into it too much. Maybe he does like love them all. Or, I mean, I, I highly doubt it, but, or maybe he just only likes or loves the one. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I just, I look below the surface because if he feels the same for all those girls that have said it, why is Rachel the only girl that he said it back to? You know no, what I mean? Course. No, I know. I'm just, there's different possibilities. For sure. For sure. So, uh, but, but the date still goes really well. She gets the rose. Uh, like we said, Rachel's the only girl that he said it back to. Uh, we, we, then they wrap up the night, little little private concert, Temecula Road action. I kind of like this. I, every time they put a musical person on, I end up listening to some of their music. Actually pretty good, some of these le- lesser known artists. What do you think about like just the ridiculousness of these uh, like private little concerts that they do? Well, I think, I think it's, yeah, I mean, it's cool if you're on the date, but to be honest, like I said before, I skipped through all these one on <laughs> I just find it too boring and just, oh man, I put a gun to my head. It's so fun. Just <laughs> but this is riveting stuff, man. Well, it's an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half episode. And so I want to cut it down as fast as much, as fast as possible. Right. Yep. No, true. Fair, 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 fair. So group date time, they go bowling. I'm like, why the fuck is Matt in this horrible, like, he's been so well dressed. Why is he in this bowling shirt? I'm like, oh, they're going bowling. So of course they split it up into two teams. This a little less controversial than a uh, boxing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, well, like I showed you that article. Yeah, a lot of people weren't happy about them boxing, which again, I was a little surprised as surprised as well. This isn't like MTV, the challenge or whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, it'd be pretty intimidating going into a boxing ring. I've never For done sure. that sort of thing before. So yeah, this is more uh, a, a decent group date, you know. For sure. So so they break up into two teams, obviously. Um, and, and just like we've seen in The Bachelor for years and The Bachelorette, two teams, winning team gets the after party. The losing team's got to walk back and uh, they, they don't get the after party. So I want to ask you about this because when the, the, the pink petals or whoever, whoever that team was, they win. The blue team loses. They have to walk back. And they're very frustrated, especially later on. I know time with Matt and time with The Bachelor Bachelorette is always important. But don't you think these little gimmicky things where one team wins and the other team doesn't get the, you know, the full night, don't you think this late in the game, it's kind of like, okay, maybe we can do this fun group date, but shouldn't everyone get a chance to be there afterwards? I mean, because it's kind of getting well, to that point in the season. Yeah, yes and, yes and no. I, I feel like the show has always done this where you know, the winning team gets more time. I mean, that's a, right. what's the point of winning if you're not going to get rewarded? And with – the group getting split up, say eight from eight down to four, you get more time with the person, right? So that way it's more, you get, obviously it's better for yourself. And if all of a sudden they get let back in, it's kind of like shit. So you're getting 10 minutes, you know, you're getting five minutes. So um, yeah, when the other group came back in, I was just like, I mean, I want to like that. I don't know. I mean, this whole, the whole as I, I've done a show and I've seen, I, I've seen the show and I've, this whole situation is very unrealistic. Right. So because yeah, because I, I understand, you know, what's the point of winning, but I also look at it from the other side. You're late, you're this late in the season, and you're like, my ability to bowl has nothing to do with my connection with Matt. No, of course. Of you course. Know, you see what I mean? I mean, same time, this late in the season, they're still bringing in new guests. I mean, this whole show isn't about actually finding love. I mean, how many of the relationships have actually lasted? outside of the outside of the you know filming right. so i don't know i guess if they wanted to make this whole show more realistic and you said this late in the game it would just be like matt okay go hang out in the house with the, the 10 people or however many right. people there the whole day for five days straight you know that's be a lot more realistic than you know getting on these doing these bowling dates and winners and losers and the right. whole situation that currently is but for sure. You know, it is what it is. For sure. For sure. So um, back in the loser's circle, like we said, they came back. I kind of like the gesture because, you know, what's the point in winning? I'm not one of those persons. Everyone gets a trophy. Everyone. I'm not not that at all. But at the same time, I'm like this late in the game. I think every, you know, everyone should get their chance. But yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Right. I, yeah, we're on the same page there. But we, I can also agree with you that the girls who won are fucking pissed. <laughs> and rightfully so. Like, I would be upset because, like you said, my time gets cut in half or maybe I get cut out altogether. And that's, you know, th- that would, you know, and especially going from that mindset of 
hey, we won, this is great. Get gonna get, have this time. And then boom, it's just swept out from underneath you. Um, so, so, like when I, when I did this, the football date and we played a game and we lost. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, you know what? Losers, come on, we'll take you in. It's kind of like, oh, geez, thanks for the sympathy award. You know, our time is, yeah. Again, again, the whole situation, you know, <laughs> fighting over one person is just, and it's weird. It, it's very, anyways. Weird. So, so now, uh, so Michelle, she ends up getting the group date rose. She takes that home. Now, Tyler C shows up, fan favorite, Hannah Brown season. Um, he's, apparently roommates with Matt, which I thought was pretty cool, which I did not know. So they're super close. They're best friends, roommates, uh, you know, Tyler C, you know, they're shooting pool kind of gets him fired up for his date one-on-one -on -one date with Katie. And they had a kind of an interesting one-on-one -on -one date for this late in the season. They kind of basically played impractical jokers where they hired this actor masseuse who was, you know, giving, you know, Tyler C a massage and she has a little earpiece in, and they're basically in in her ear, just like a practical jokers kind of punked Ashton Kutcher hybrid, calling the shots, telling them what to do, what to say. And she's being awkward. She's like rubbing his his nipples and like squeezing, like twisting his nipples. They're, she's like taking phone calls and like talking about him out loud right in front of him. So obviously that was a big prank, um, which was kind of funny to watch. But would you be kind of upset if you were Katie? You know, if you were in her situation and this was the bachelorette, you have a date with the lovely bachelorette and you're like, we're kind of doing this bullshit fuck around game and we're, you know, approaching hometowns. Yeah. Um, so yes and no. First off, I think this date idea is probably one of the best they've had. Um, I it think was it'd fun. Be fun. I think you could have so much fun with it. I think you'd be funny. You'd be laughing and you can see where the person's imagination's at and you know, all that sort of thing. And, uh, but yeah, this late in the game, it's getting on the fence of maybe it should have been done earlier in the season. Right. Um, I feel like the editing and whatnot, they could have, they could have shown us more, like, for example, like they could have drawn it out a little bit more and played around with it even more. So, cause it was pretty PG, it was pretty PG and kind of lame. I feel like they could have even made it funnier, oh, yeah. but I think the great, the, that date, um, uh, or that whole thing was perfect. Um, it just made sense. Obviously, if it was only an hour and that's that's all you got, then yeah, you know, kind of sucks. But I think obviously you'd rather go on like a hot air balloon ride and you know horseback riding or yeah. ATVing and doing that sort of thing all day would be better. Right. But I still think it's a great. I think it was a great idea. Um, and I enjoyed kinda, walking that part. You're you're kind of making me come around on this because. You know, uh, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, this would this would suck. This isn't like the the romantic, like big thing. But at the same time, they're one on one. They're spending time together. They're you know, they're being themselves. They're being silly. They're being comical. And obviously this wouldn't happen in the real world unless you're on a TV show. But it kind of has a parallel. Like if you're out on a date or out at a bar and you start doing people watching or something like that, you know, that's something that happens in the real world. So I'm actually kind of coming around on this idea, especially when you have a dinner date to follow it. I actually have kind of flipped. I kind of like it now. And I, and I, and I would have, I would have loved to do, to do it. I mean, you see some of these dates over the years where, you know, they're making pottery, like, or they got to do yoga and it's just, yeah. I had a lot of it, a lot of these dates are horrible. I mean, so I think to myself, yeah, I would enjoy this. I'd be obviously it would be better if you had that plus a hot air balloon. And, you know, some other extras, you know, flying in a plane together. But um, right. I, yeah, I think, I think it would have been great. I would have enjoyed it. All right. All right. So let's get to dinner time. Katie, Matt, um, it kind of gets serious there. It's a solid date so far. And you even said, you sent me a message. I, I want to know what you, what you saw or maybe what you heard or just how you felt. Because you said, you're like, I don't feel like she's going to get the rose. And she ends up not getting the rose. Matt picks it up. He goes... It just wasn't enough. He, he just couldn't give her the rose. Katie goes home. Why did you feel that way? What, what was, you know, what, you know, instinct? How did well, you? Well, first off, I think everyone has got a, a rose. That was kind of one indicator. Like on the one-on-ones, everyone kept getting a rose. Um, that was just a small part of the reason why. But also, I just feel like, I don't know, just they're different people, I think. Yeah. Um, even though I think Katie is, is one of my more favorite yeah. cast, uh, as in if I were to date someone, like looks wise, she's not bad for me, but 
personality wise, I think it's pretty good. I don't know if the fact that her like not tattletaling, but bringing up the bullying thing had anything to do with like the fact that she's kind of associated with these negative, the negative people that were there. Um, no, I think that's a great point because I don't know if that really worked against her, but at the same time, I mean, I, we don't know what it was like, you know, that didn't make it to the show, but as an audience, as a viewer, the really only times that we saw her is when she was tangled up with Serena C or Queen Victoria. We don't really have any memorable moments of her and Matt. And if there were any, they totally got washed away in a viewer's perspective by the drama stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we just, and we also just didn't see really any connection in the first five episodes no. with Katie and Matt. So again, it was just not, I wasn't too, super surprised that she got sent home. Um, yeah. Right. The, the only glimpse of chemistry we got is when they were messing with Tyler C and the masseuse, but really it's hard to mess that up. I mean, you could take two people yeah. that really don't know each other and they could have fun with that. So that's not a huge. Like more of a, just a friendship. Yeah. It, it seemed like more just like a fun friendship than right. anything more serious. So hundred percent, hundred percent. So so Katie out, Heather is in. Heather pulls up in her minivan in all its glory. She looks good. Heather looks good. She walks up the red carpet. She walks in, she gives a little wave to the girls. And you know, as we know, a good looking blonde haired girl with blue eyes, no one's ever been intimidated by that. So she walks in, walks past everyone. Everyone's like, who the fuck is that? Who, like they're in their head, they're like, who is this bitch? I swear to God, if someone else is like, I'm going to, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to rip her hair out. I'm going to beat her up. Like people have to be furious. They're like confused. And then she walks in, Matt is talking. This is so telling for me. She's talking to, he's talking to Piper one-on-one -on -one. Piper recently just said, I'm falling for you. They had a one-on-one. -on -one. She got a rose. Things are clicking with them. She walks in, Matt completely forgets about her. He's basically like, get the fuck out. What's up, Heather? He was super excited to see Heather. He was surprised. He was taken yeah. back. And, and you can just see that in his eye. He's like, Heather, like, what's up, Heather? Like, sit he's down. Laughing. Let me it, talk weird, though. it seems like from there, from his body language and kind of what he briefly said or not, it seemed like they know each other. No, they, they definitely, that, that, that mutual friend or whoever it was, I wish I would have went back and found I'm out sure, exactly I'm, who it was. I'm sure they've hung out before. I'm sure they've hung out before. They've I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you could tell he was pretty excited. And, uh, yeah. Now, the girls, it's funny, from the, the little clip that we saw there with Heather coming in and then the preview for next episode, man, these girls are so salty. They're oh, yeah. such... But rightfully so. I totally get it. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you got to understand that, it's not, it's not that she's coming in to try to piss these girls off that, that, that you got to realize, be pissed off at the producers for letting it happen. You know, you got to realize this, this is reality TV and this is entertainment that like, you know, just because like, oh, she's a, they're calling her like name. She's a bitch, stupid, ho whatever it is. Yeah. And it's like, you don't even know the person and right. you're going to just call her these things. But as you we've know, seen in real life and especially this show, because it's magnified, it's on TV, just like we saw with Britney. Brittany comes in. It's not her fault that they brought her in late. Anna wants to spread the whole escort thing, ruin her name. You know, Brittany stuck around for a few episodes. She's gone now. But st at the end of the day, you're right. The root of the problem is the, you know, if you're a girl, the root of the problem truly is the producers, the people that let them on the show, right? Or be mad at Matt. Matt's the one that, you know, had to, of course, give the okay for Heather to come back. Mm -hmm. But the but what's always going to happen, it's always going to fall back on the person. It's always going to be Brittany. How do we get Brittany out of here? Oh, I kind of heard maybe she was an escort. So let's just throw that out there and see if it sticks to the wall. This isn't Heather's fault, but she's the one that's here. So fuck her. And that's not fair, but that's the reality. Yeah, I mean, this kind of goes into real life where you hear girls are pretty catty towards each other in situations like this. I mean, guys can too, but I don't think they're not like as name calling. Yeah. I don't know. And Sorry to say, I, I mean, I'm not and, trying and to put blame on I've seen this show as kind of survival of the fittest. I mean, especially in non-COVID times where they're traveling all over the place, all these different time zones, in and out of suitcase, hotels, long nights, drinking, you know, not exactly taking the best care of yourself. You're worn down. I mean, at the end, any little wrinkle to the system, you're going to be frustrated with. So the producers, from an entertainment perspective, great 
But if you're a contestant on the show, you're like, I, I just won this battle. Now you're throwing another one at me. I feel like I, I'm not making any ground here. I feel like I'm treading, I'm treading water. Yeah, it's gotta be fresh. It's gotta be frustrating for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Any final thoughts, Daniel, before we wrap up? No, next episode should be good. Hopefully I'm this episode good. was a little bit boring, but what, because what, I'm not on the TV screen. Yeah. So, so what do you think? I want to know. I think Rachel's still she's my number one. There's no, she's not going to be in the final four. No, the final four. And one, one of the reasons why I think that, because again, I think I already said, I think I saw like a spoiler where it was like the final four. And from what I remember, she wasn't in it. Gotcha. But um, is, is I could Rachel, be wrong. I don't know. She, 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 she might get a, she might get a rose and make it one, one, one beat or something like that. But I can't see her going long term. Gotcha. We'll see. Rachel's still my number one. I can't wait for that. I'm bad with the names. Which one is she? She's the one, they had a really good one-on-one -on -one date. They did the shopping with the celebrity stylist. He said he was falling in love with her. Yeah, 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 I got that one. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, think that's, I think that's been the strongest connection. So that's my number one still. Otherwise, you could just slide in her DM and be like, hey, I'm that fucking guy that... Hey, I'm that guy. I know you've seen me. I know you listen to the show. You want to come on the show? I'm uh, Chris Harrison's idol. <laughs> Chris Harrison looks up to me. Looks up to me. What's up? There you go. It's good to have confidence. I love it. <laughs> that's right. I'm, 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 I'm far gone. I'm, I'm in, that's why I love this show because I'm not even in touch with my own reality, apparently. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching another episode, episode six, the bachelor roundup, Joe Vore, Daniel McGuire. Again, remember to every single Tuesday, YouTube, Joe Vore, be sure to subscribe Apple and Spotify, the Joe Vore podcast. Follow, rate, review, and subscribe. Talk to you guys next Tuesday.